this video I'm going to work on a step sequencer using an event table and this project is going to be pretty similar to an arpeggiator that I built recently and to that end I'm going to actually use the same clock source for this project as I did for the arpeggiator and let's just go over that real quick in case you missed that tutorial to begin with, I'm calculating the length of a single bar in milliseconds using the tempo info module and a little bit of math. And we're multiplying that value against a fractional value that will determine the sync length in bars. And so once we multiply those values together, we have the length of our sync amount in milliseconds. And we're feeding the bottom half of the modulo with that number. And then in the upper corner here, we have a simple structure that counts the amount of time in milliseconds since the last gate press. So once these values are moduloed against each other, the div output will give us the number of sync periods that have passed since the last gate press. So using this module, we can build a quick sequencer. So let's create a new macro for our sequencer and we can connect it to our clock and give it a new name. And the first thing that we're going to do once we're inside is we're going to modulo the incoming clock value by 16. And what this is going to do is limit the incoming number from to 0 to 15 and that number from 0 to 15 will determine which step of our 16 step sequence that we are currently on. And we're going to use the order module connected to the output to control a few things connected to the event table. To start we're just going to use it to set the read position and then to trigger the read. And while we're at it have a few things to change about the event table. Um, it gets created with a table size of zero, so I'm going to go and just give it uh, 16 steps along the x-axis, and you can keep the, the y value at 1. And then I'm going to change the uh, min and max values, so it has a range from negative 12 to 12 and a step size of 1. And you don't have to do that, it's just term depends on uh, what you're using the table to run. I'm going to use it in this example to modulate the pitch of an oscillator. So it's just a simple way to be able to pitch the oscillator up or down by one octave. So by setting the table min and max to the pr appropriate values, you can use the table to modulate just about anything you want. In this case, I'm just going to set it up to a very simple uh, sawtooth oscillator with an AR envelope. Okay, so you may have noticed while we were setting up the event table that we didn't actually provide any way to write new values into the event table. We only gave it a way to read values. And that's okay because the event table is actually comes with a built-in method for drawing in new sequences. And to access that, you can simply right-click on the table in the panel view and select the table draw mode option. And as you can see, after that it becomes very easy to draw in your own selections. However, there's a few strange details. Uh, the first is that you can continue drawing after the end of the table panel area and the new values that you draw in will continue to wrap around as you can see what I'm doing right now. And I don't really like this so you can change it by going into the function tab of the event table properties and selecting the clip function instead of wrap right here.
All right, so as you can hear, that'll play back our sequence. Um, but there's one other problem, and that is that we can't actually store these sequences and have them get recalled with a snapshot. So just to demonstrate that, I'm going to draw in two sequences here and save them. And you'll see when I try to call them back that nothing happens. And the reason for that is that the event table actually doesn't store any snapshot data. So to fix this problem and to store our sequences properly, we're going to use a snapshot value array, which you can find in the auxiliary section. And this will store snapshot data, and we can feed the data into the event table when a new snapshot is recalled. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a way of getting data from the event table into the snapshot value array while we're drawing the table in, because when we're drawing the table, the table actually doesn't send out any information or give us any events to work with at all. So in an awkward kind of workaround, what we can do instead is when we read the table values out using the clock, we can store that value back into the snapshot array. And this doesn't work perfectly because sometimes you draw in a new value and you don't actually have time to read it all into the array before you save the snapshot. So make sure after you're done drawing just to give it a second before snap saving a snapshot. Now you see when we do this we're going to come up with another problem which is that the snapshot value array is always monophonic and I'm trying to build a polyphonic, polyphonic structure so we have another problem to solve pertaining to that. And to solve this problem, I'm going to build another macro to put the snap value array in. But for now, let's at least change the size of it to 16 so it can store the same number of values as the event table. And we also want to turn off the events through option. And what the events through option does is that when the snapshot value array uh, receives a new value, it will output that value and index number at the output of the snap value array. And the reason we want to have that turned off is that the input to the snap value array is the event table and the output is also the event table. So if we have the event through option selected, we're going to end up with some uh, event loops. So again, let's just put the snap value array in its own macro. And this macro is going to have three inputs, and I'm going to use the first input to determine the m most recent active voice. And this is a trick that you can also see in the simple scope macro that comes as part of the reactor library. Simply run the V output of a voice info module into a value and use a gate or other sort of trigger to trigger that value and run the output through an event voice combiner and <coughs> the output of the event voice combiner will be the most recent voice so you can use the from voice module to grab only that the active voice from a signal so we're going to use this to take the incoming index and outcoming value of the event table and find the most recent values on the most recent voice and store those into the snapshot value array in a monophonic manner. And the reason I'm adding one and then subtracting one from the index values has to do with the way that the snap value array and the event table works, where the event table has a range from zero to the size of the table minus one, and the snap value array has a index value from one to the size of the table. So next let's get the value input and output in place here, and we'll be just about finished. All right, so I was also going to add some glide to this module, but we're running out of time here, so I'm just going to save that for the next tutorial. 
and finish off with a simple uh, sound bite and demonstration of working snapshots. Thank you.